Hey guys, welcome back to another episode on German Motors and Engineering. Today I would like to tell you a tale. Once we had a customer who came to us and he already bought a lot of cars from us and maybe you remember this, uh, the Jeep Grand Cherokee from the JP video. This is also one of his cars and in the meantime he became a friend of mine. And he said, hey Rene, I want a Mustang GT500 but I want a convertible. I don't want a coupe. I want a convertible. Can, you, can we cut uh, the roof away somehow and make a convertible from it? And uh, yeah, we did not think a lot of time about that idea because that's not possible. When you have a, a, cube, a coupe and you cut away the roof, then um, all the stability from the chassis is away. And when you imagine you, you have uh, a box and you open uh, and you cut the roof of that box away, then it's very, very easy to, uh, to bend that, that box because it's no box uh, anymore. And this is the concept um, of normal uh, passenger cars with, with, uh, with, with, those, uh, with their chassis. They only work as a whole and you cannot cut away um, structure because this would lead into, yeah, into nothing. And convertibles, when they come from the manufacturer, they have a completely different uh, structure in the, in, the, in the bottom. They have much more steel, which uh, yeah, makes them um, rigid enough, even though they have no roof. And therefore the idea was buying um, a chassis from a convertible and convert it into a GT500. This was a way that is possible. So we sit down and we uh, did some, some animations and uh, worked out the whole concept. He said he, would, he, he wants it in white with all the uh, GT500 exterior and of course uh, the power, but he wanted other wheels which are better looking. And I said, well, yeah, when we are making some wheels for you, why also not uh, doing some better brakes instead of using this, uh, the standard brakes. So the result was a GT500 convertible, which is even better than a GT500 from the factory. And here it is. Yeah, this nice uh, white little pony has so many details. Yeah, I don't really know where to start. So <laughs> let's try to find a red line and then uh, work from yeah from the from the front to the back or from the power uh, to the aerodynamics or whatever. Uh, let's simply open the hood and then I think there will be uh, enough things to talk about. Um, yeah, the most or the heart of the of the car is always the engine. So we have a five liter Coyote engine, and we boosted it to 750 horsepower because this was the goal. We would like to have a GT500 convertible, and the power from the GT500 is uh, the key uh, where everything begins. So we choose an Edelbrock supercharger with internals which have 2,650 cc displacement and this roots uh, supercharger moves the air to the engine without having this uh, yeah this this typical uh, screw type supercharger sound it is very uh, quiet you can hear it a little bit but the customer does not want to have such a loud supercharger noise he wants it to be powerful and he would like to hear more the exhaust and not uh, the supercharger therefore this type of uh, supercharger was yeah, the one that we chose for him and we equipped it with that big cold air in uh, intake box which breathes the air from here and does not breathe hot air, it breathes cold air and cold air is very important, as important as cold oil. 
So we decided <coughs> to develop an oil cooler and this oil cooler does not sit in front of all the other coolers. Otherwise you would have the hot air from the oil cooler, blow it over the uh, uh, intercooler from the supercharger and then yeah, you have the water cooler and um, the cooler for the air condition. We choose to put the oil cooler in a horizontal orientation. So this one is laying horizontal behind the air intake um, in the front bumper and the air goes out to the, to the uh, bottom of the car and the intercooler from the supercharger also gets direct cool air. This cooling concept results in cool air temperatures for the supercharger and cool oil, oil temps for the engine and that's the perfect way. The rest of the air takes an exit through the hood and this is a very nice feature for high speeds and for, and for a very good handling of the car. When you imagine you would have a closed hood and you have so many air intakes in the front and you're driving fast, where does this air um, exit? It exits um, on the bottom of the car and you're driving like a hovercraft on, on, a, yeah, on, on compressed air and you don't have downforce, you have some kind of upforce. Uh, if that's maybe the right word in English, I don't know, but you know what I mean. And this hood with, with this big air exit or air outlet results in, in a very good handling because the air goes into the front and it exits on top of the hood and flows over the car so you have yeah, a downforce which is generated by that. Let's move on. We cleaned the front fenders because there are holes here in which uh, hold the, the emblems from the, normal, uh, from the normal GT. We painted them, put the uh, Shelby badges there. We uh, took away this massive, big and ugly uh, antenna. This is also cleaned away, it's, it's welded and it's uh, painted afterwards, so you have a nice clean shape in the back. We used a smaller rear spoiler, not this very massive one, we used a smaller one. This was also uh, the idea of the customer to have a convertible and not, yeah, it, it shouldn't look too aggressive. The uh, rear taillights, they are LED and they are moving from the inside uh, to the outside. When you uh, set the indicator, we used the, of course, it should be a GT500, therefore we have the GT500 rear diffuser and we developed an exhaust system which has more diameter than the original exhaust system. It has a three inch piping and it's made from stainless steel. It uses the motors for the controls and therefore it's acting um, like the original exhaust system because it's controlled by the car itself and the factory tells when it should open and when it uh, should be closed but it sounds yeah, it sounds a little bit deeper, it sounds more like more volume um, on the engine and now the car also sounds as it looks and the exhaust system which we developed for that Mustang is part of the whole concept. As I said at the beginning, we sat down and uh, developed the whole concept of that car and part of it, the concept was not to use uh, OEM wheels he would like to have something uh, special and we have multi-piece wheels, they are forged and CNC machined and they have uh, a deep lip and they are concave at the same time. Those spokes, they are ending here at the outside of the wheel and in between the spokes we have this deep lip, so this wheel combines both worlds together. And to show that it's uh, a multi-piece wheel, we decided uh, to, to use a black glossy finish on the lip and a matte black finish on the disc. The brake system behind is also not a standard brake system from the GT500. We developed a brake system to fill this 9.5 uh, by 20 wheel completely. And this resulting brake system, which fills it completely, has a 400 millimeter diameter brake disc which is 36 millimeter wide and we have a monoblock forged caliper with four brake pads and eight brake pistons. So you have a pair of brake pistons driving one uh, brake pad 
And the reason why we used two brake pads on each side is that when you are braking, you are um, causing dust and you are causing uh, hot air and, and gases which would like to exit somewhere. And when you divide a long brake pad into two pieces, you have a slot um, in between, in the middle, where all these things can exit. And you have a much, much better braking with multi brake pads com uh, compared to a long classical brake pad. This brake disc is also multi-piece. It has, has a alloy uh, center section and a steel ring. And when um, the, the brake disc is worn out, you don't need to replace the whole disc. You only replace the ring. And the cool thing is that both parts are not connected together with, with screws, so they are not hard connected. They have a floating connection. You have slots which uh, point to, to the inside um, of the brake disc. and. In these slots, there are sitting some, some um, metal blocks, and when the outside uh, part, when, when the ring is heating up, the ring can expand, and when it cools down, it can shrink again, and then you have two parts. The middle section nearly um, keeps its temperature because it's uh, directly connected to the wheel and to the axle, so it has parts where it can uh, um, yeah, give away the heat, and this outside part where you, you, where you are braking and friction causes heat, this one heats up as well as the brake, as the brake pads and it can freely expand and uh, shrink so you have never the problem that you have a shaking steering wheel. We can use different brake pads, some for racing or for, for different purposes and the, the brake pad which we use here is more for street application so you don't have um, a noisy brake, which is caused by uh, the, 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 uh, yeah, the high friction rate of racing brake pads, because with a high friction rate you need only a little bit uh, pedal pressure to cause high brake forces, and with a little bit um, pedal pressure the whole system is not compressed very much and uh, all the parts can move, and when they are moving then they have this, this uh, little tiny vibration which you can hear as a creaking noise from the brake. So, we have less, we have brake pads with, with a good friction rate, but not too much to have enough compression uh, which is not causing any brake noise. On the rear, the wheels are even wider. They are 11 inch wide and they fill the whole, uh, the whole uh, wheelhouse in the back. And the brake system also contains of a forged monoblock caliper with four pistons in the rear, but um, we don't have the handbrake in that caliper as it is from the factory. We have the handbrake separated um, in, a, in a separate caliper because I think, well I don't think, I know that it's better to use different components for different systems. You have a cable driven handbrake and you have uh, an, an oil pressure uh, driven foot brake. So why should we do both in one caliper which cannot uh, do one or both parts very good when it's possible to uh, choose two calipers and each of uh, both um, each caliper can do his task at its best and this is what we did in the rear the tires which we are using are uh, 265 in the front, 305 in the back and of course we used um, Michelin tires because those Michelin tires they have a very very nice grip and this grip is not there and then it suddenly ends. They have a high grip level and when the grip is ending you can feel how, how that uh, how that tire yeah, loses the grip in a, in a very slow way and you have enough time to counter uh, steer and, and to react. And not only you, also all the systems in the car which keep it on the road have more room to, uh, to, to do their job. So the tire is the only connection between you, your car and the ground. And in my eyes at the moment Michelin is doing the best ones. And yeah, so our customer gets only the best and therefore the Michelin tires. Finally the interior. We have this white, black and red concept and we transported it uh, to the inside of the car. We used this airbag with the Shelby badge and a steering wheel 
uh, with carbon and with a better shape so you have a better feel when you are um, driving the car and those um, yeah, red applications yeah it, it shows that black red and white is the concept of this car we adjusted all the lights in red and when you're driving um, at night you will see how, how very nice that looks but I think that's enough theory let's take it out to the road such a nice weather we would open uh, the roof and drive uh, such a convertible as it should but I think it's better to leave it closed otherwise you uh, would not really understand me such Mustang drives I think it's it's one of the roundest uh, muscle cars so a Challenger is very long and has a very massive engine and it's hard to bring uh, that amount of horsepower and torque down to the street. A Camaro um, has very small windows and yeah, the overview is not that good but it has uh, sharp edges and yeah, the shapes that you like. And such a Mustang is somewhere in between. It, it tries to make uh, yeah, everybody happy and it handles as a normal car and you can use it for for racing you can use it for yeah driving through the city and or even when you are going to holiday for a longer for a longer trip this mustang yeah drives you everywhere and you can choose if you want to to drive it on the street if you would like to uh, take it to the racetrack and with those different adjustments that you can do the steering wheel reacts in another way also those electronic um, dampers become a little bit harder on the racetrack the engine and the exhaust system um, is more aggressive then and so you can choose every day what you would like to do and this makes this package surround I think also when you uh, look at the interior we have a carbon steering wheel um, installed in in this build with with the red uh, applications and this black red and white concept which we um, started on the outside of the car is also transported to the inside and if it would be night right now you would see all those little lights here lighting in red and this makes that car such a yeah nice round and clean looking convertible and if you also have a Mustang or if you would like to have the whole package from us, the car and uh, those modifications, then call us, visit us or if you have already have a Mustang and would like us to build it according to your specifications or if you would have, if you have your own, um, your own project and you need somebody to make that project happen, then I think that's a task um, for us. I hope you liked that video. Send us some comments and yeah, see you next time. Uh, yeah.